Today I'm going to cook a savory breakfast for you. It's a little bit different than the conventional breakfast with more sweet, roll and Danish and that type of thing. And I like to cook soup for breakfast, integrating the type of ingredient that you would have in a regular breakfast like oatmeal, milk and so forth. But with a tiny dash of salt and some ground pepper on on it rather than, uh, rather than putting sweet and so forth. And that's what we're going to start today. With the milk, I have three and a half cup of milk here cooking for the soup, and we're going to have leek and oatmeal in it. Uh, I use regular milk, which is about 150 calories or so per cup, and of course, if you feel like using skim milk, then it will cut down a great deal on your calorie. Uh, not only will it cut down on the calorie by half at least, but uh, more so and maybe more important on the fat in it. So we have the leek, and as you say that leek here, now this is boiling. The leek, I use a lot of the green of the leek also. You know, if you see that it's about tender, you should not discard the green of the leek or the scallion. We're going to cut that very fine. The leek will cook in almost no time, you know, two, three minutes. We do the same type of soup occasionally with water or chicken stock, you know, as more of a dinner type of soup, in addition of other vegetables. But I thought for breakfast, we do soup in France with milk, you know. My mother does a soup just with milk and bread in it, and herb, you know, which is very good also. Nice for breakfast. So, we put our leek in there, give you a beautiful color too the white of the milk and the grain of dough. And this will cook a couple of minutes before we add the oatmeal. And those are rolled oat, you know, natural, quite good. And during that time, I want to start on the second dish. And the second dish is quite interesting. Actually, it is a mold done with white fish or another type of a smoked fish, you know. I have white fish here. If you cannot find white fish at your market, this is smoked white fish quite common where I live in, the, in, the, in Connecticut, but uh, you can use uh, smoked trout that is available all over, even sable or other type of smoked fish. And with this, we are putting uh, some radish in it. I have a bit of cream cheese. And again, there, if you want to cut down a little bit, you replace your cream cheese with maybe a bit of ricotta. That will be, of course, much uh, less calorie than the cream cheese. Sometimes I have addition of other vegetables, cucumber in it and so forth. You can do that type of mixture. And now I think that uh, this has been cooking for like a minute or so, boiling nicely. So what I'm going to do is really add the oat now in there. And again, bring it to a boil, stir it a little bit. And it will take a couple of minutes for this to finish cooking. Now it cooks pretty fast, you know. You have to watch, of course, that the milk doesn't uh, rise and just make a mess out of your stove and your pot. I'm going to cover it, maybe, and put it on very low. That's it. Put it on very low, and that should be OK this way. And during that time, I am going to do the mold here. Keep taking a look at my... Uh, at my soup occasionally. So the skin, as you see here, will come out quite easily from that uh, smoked fish. And what you want to do is really run your knife in the center and pull out, you know, push it out like this, the pieces of fish, you know, to remove most of the bone, because that central bone will stay there. This, we can rewrap it and keep it. I will have plenty here to show you how to do it. And what we do, I put a piece of plastic wrap directly. Whoop, watch your milk. That's going to be all right. What you do, you put a piece of plastic wrap so it helps in the unmolding because you can really do that way ahead, you know? You can do that ahead. In the bottom of it, I put some chive to start with, you know? And a little piece of the cream cheese that you will press directly, embedded really, into the chive there. Then on top of it, we have sliced radish. Now you know, you can, as I say, have cucumber, you can have some scallion in it. You can really have fun with that dish, doing different type of uh, interpretation. Then our first layer of white fish. 
You can have smoked salmon would be very good in it. As I say, as well as trout. Okay, maybe a bit more of the chives, a bit more of the um, radish on top. You can really do it according to your own taste. Maybe a bit more of this. You want to kind of fill up the mold. Maybe another little piece of that on top and a few more radish. I don't even remember. Uh, when I do several one, they end up all being one different to the other. Bring back this on top of it so you can press it into shape, you know? This way. And uh, that should do it. So at that point, all you have to do is really to unmold it, which is really quite easy. You know, bring this on the outside so you can bring that in the center. Now, it's going to be easy with the plastic wrap to bring it out. You unmold it gently. I say the advantage is to have that ahead, you know. A bit of uh, toast next to it. And you have a beautiful little uh, breakfast brunch type of dish, you know, which will work very well, as I say, with different type of uh, smoked fish, different type of cream cheese, different type of vegetable, ricotta, and so forth. Just the question of having the idea, actually you can do it large for a party, which is quite nice. And I think now that the soup should be about cooked, as those, uh, if you leave it longer, you know, the soup, it may get thick, quite thick, and if it get a bit too thick, then you may have to dilute it with a little bit of water or milk. I want to put some cracked paper in it and a little dash of salt, stir it. And this is a very hearty, you know, earthy soup that uh, we love that at home, you know. Now here it is. That's really breakfast, but a different type of breakfast, you know. Here we are. So the soup is going to be very satisfying also. Uh, and what we want to do next is to move to another uh, dish that we're doing for breakfast, made with citrus fruit. Quite different, but it's all part of our breakfast juice and so forth. And what I have here, I have different type of orange and grapefruit. I try to get those ruby red uh, grapefruit, you know, and sometimes they are very red in sun, sometimes they are less red. What I have here, different type of orange, this is a blood orange, which you can see is beautifully red inside. And I have one made right here of the blood orange and the regular, um, the regular um, orange here. So what we do first, we take the skin out of this. Oh, but maybe first I will take a little bit of the skin of the grapefruit, all of that to do a little bit of what we call a julienne to serve as a garnish. Be sure to wash your grapefruit first which is what I did when you want to use the skin. I think it's better to wash it first. Fold this in half and cut it very thin like this to do a little bit of what we call, as I say, a julienne, which is those nice, thin little strip here that you can put in uh, many things, you know, from sauces to fruit salad. There is about 130 calories in that type of uh, things without, of course, any cholesterol in it, so it's good. So we want to take then the skin. Now notice that I will move my knife in a jigsaw fashion, you know, I'm cutting around here so that I get to the flesh, directly removing that thick layer of white skin which is under the surface, you know. And uh, you have to have a sharp knife for that and you don't apply too much pressure, you just turn around so that you remove that long strip that I have here. And as you can see, that ruby red, supposedly ruby red uh, uh, grapefruit is quite pale in color inside. Then now we want to remove the segment here. And what you do, you cut the first one this way to get the segment. Next to the next membrane, you run your knife and twist it around. It will come back up next to the next membrane. And here you go. This is the classical way of doing orange, grapefruit, and so forth. 
lemon sometimes. We take wedge of lemon to serve with a fish. Lime, of course it's better or easier rather if you do that with a seedless fruit, you know. When you have the seed, it's always a kind of a pan in the middle, you know. Now when I get to the end of it, at the last one, I have all of those membranes left with a lot of juice, so I will press the remaining juice into it. We need that to put on top. Okay. And into that juice here, we're creating a sauce by putting a little bit of honey. Mm -hmm. Nice and uh, you have the tartness, you know, and the sweetness of the honey and uh, the acidity of the, of the juice. I have that here and now we want to decorate our plate, arrange it. And this, I can put segment maybe of this here and segment of the orange in between to give two different color. I will take the blood orange here because of course it has a more beautiful uh, color than the other. Blood orange are not available in all parts of the country, but quite a lot now. And as I say, regular orange will be fine also. But look at that beautiful design that it makes here. Now we have a little bit of that skin, you know, on the outside just to dress up the plate. And it's also good to eat. I love the skin like that. It's crunchy. It has a bit of bitterness in it, which I think goes well with it. And our sauce on top. Remember, this is our honey sauce. And maybe in the middle of this, I can put a little uh, spring of, uh, of mint inside. Remember that citrus fruit are very high in vitamin C. It's good for you. Actually, it's good for your gum and your blood vessel. So I'm sure not only is it good for you, but you're going to enjoy looking at it and enjoy eating it. Of course, there is no real breakfast without eggs. And I know the eggs, the last few years, have been maligned a great deal. Eggs is a terrific food, I mean, a complete food, high in protein and so forth, but the American Heart Association will recommend you not eating more than four eggs per week, four egg yolk, actually. So if you have to uh, watch your intake of eggs, uh, we do it certain way. Like here, we're going to do of cocotte, we call cocotte eggs. Those little things, those little souffle moles, we call a cocotte, which in colloquial France means a little chicken, a cocotte, you know, in a cute way. So um, we cook them in there. So like that, you serve only one egg per person. And as you can see, I butter or oil lightly those molds. And what you can do is to put a little bit of garnish in the bottom, whatever you have left over. Like here, I have some peas, you know. I could have some peas in the bottom to put my garnish there. This one, I put some herbs around, a mixture of tarragon and chives, and that I can unmold it. And those, we can put the garnish on top of it, or no garnish at all. So those are all different alternatives. And those are different way of cooking eggs, those egg cocotte, which actually are classic way of cooking eggs, you know? You can see the, the, those peas, you know, right through here. And those, we put now, I have some ham here, and I will put it in garnish, and on top. Mm. And what you do with this, very simply, you put them to cook in a double boiler, you know, as we have here, which is just a skillet, a skillet with some water in it. You put them directly in there and put them to cook with the lid on. If you put a bit of salt in it or paper, you put it in the bottom also so that you don't dirty if you want the top of your egg, you know. And uh, this has to cook about three and a half, four minutes. It depends how you like to cook it. At three and a half minutes, the yolk will still be a bit runny. Now, if you're worried about salmonella, you will have to cook it a little more so that the temperature reach like 160 degree internal temperature. And uh, so this is done at the last moment. Also, actually, you could prepare your little cocotte, ready to have them poached. If you have guests coming, you know, you have them all ready them and they are cooked in a couple of minutes. Next we're going to do an omelette, a classic French omelette and I want to discuss this with you a little bit. I am doing uh, that with, uh, with mushroom this time and one large mushroom should be enough. Those are a bit small so maybe I'll use a bit more than one 
half. Usually you cut the bottom part of it in dice to saute and the top part of it, you know the cap, you keep it, you keep it whole like that to decorate the top of the omelet. So both of them, you know the top as well as the bottom, first we saute it, you know, lightly with maybe a little dash of salt on top, saute it for uh, a minute or so. I have three eggs here. This is a three eggs omelette. Cracked paper in it, a dash of salt, and I beat my eggs. Now, I used to have chicken behind my house in Connecticut, and I had free range chicken, and the egg that those chicken gave me was absolutely terrific. Much deeper in color, high lecithin in the egg yolk, which is your thickening agent, much better quality. And now that I don't have time to take care of my chicken, I still try to get my eggs in a health food place to get organic eggs. Actually, I get it where I am from a farm, which is an organic farm. You know? And that's important in terms of the quality of the eggs. What we want to do here is to rearrange those uh, slice of mushroom from the cap. Uh, as I say, this will be in the decoration of the omelette. So we put them on a little spatula or a knife here just to arrange it on top. This way. So the quality of the eggs for me is very, very important here. Now those pieces, we put them in there. Now what I'm going to do here is a classic French omelette. There is different type of omelette. We do in France omelette, which are a uh, country type of omelette, just as I do standard American omelette, where you put your eggs into the, the skillet and that you have large curd. You turn those curd into the liquid eggs let it curdle again and eventually fold it together. It makes large curd uh, with a different texture and this is more of a country style omelette. In the case of what we are doing here, I think I should clean up that pot, that uh, skillet after the mushroom. Uh, in what we are doing here, it's a bit different. Uh, I am moving, I will be moving the pan very, very fast so that I get the smallest possible curd of eggs. And you don't want it because as soon as the eggs curdle in the bottom, the protein, that is the albumin in the egg, solidified and get hard. If you overcook your eggs, like when you do omelette, even when you do things with egg, like custard, if you overcook, it toughens, you know? So you don't want the eggs to toughen, so you move it as fast as you can. Huh? And as soon as the egg is slightly taken, you fold it, bring back both lips. So put your eggs in the butter with your hand and the flat of the spoon here, you move that omelette. As you can see, as fast as you can, bring back the side. And now, all the eggs are on this hand. I like it soft. Why so bring everything here so that I don't have a layer and roll a carpet? Here, that's what, just let it take. Run my, uh, my fork around and I fold that lip, that the first lip. You see, you want to have a nice half moon shape. Now to bring back that lip, bang it here, which will bring back that lip as you see here. Now you change hand. Take your plate, bang the omelette so that it's really to the edge, then you can invert it. And the omelette should be oval like that, very creamy and soft in the center. It should not even be brown and no pleat on top. And finally, here, I'm putting the, the last touch on top of this, which is the end of your omelette. Now, that omelette is soft, as you can see here. This is a question of taste. Sometimes you want your omelette to be much more cooked, and it's perfectly fine, you know, but it should be pointed and soft like this. Uh, now, I can put that omelette right here, and we can look at our eggs, I can see, you know, when I shake the eggs, I can see whether it's cooked or not. And at that point again, my wife very often would like her eggs done this way, you know. Uh, I like my eggs done a little more. Those eggs need at least one more minute to cook. And during that time, I can do a couple of toasts that we are going to have. If you unmold one of those eggs, you will unmold it on a little crouton like this. So you just do your toast and unmold it and cut crouton out of this. I always keep this, you know. 
uh, to do bread crumb with it. I do the bread crumb and uh, keep them some time for a couple of days before I use them in the freezer. On those here, you want to trim the edge of it if you want to be a little fancy, you know, and cut little strip like this. We call that in French mouillette, and mouillette is just mouillette meaning to wet, so you eat your egg actually with this instead of using a spoon, you know, which is nice and cute. And this is sometimes arranged directly on a plate, you know. We can put those uh, this way, across. You do like a pyramid out of it, you know, which is nice for breakfast, little toast like this. Okay, so that's one way of, uh, of uh, arranging it, you know, if you want. This one should be toasted a bit more. Okay, here we are. And that one mold the other one. Remember that uh, this is, yeah, those are about uh, cooked and up the first one here. This and those. You can see the inside, how shaky they are, and that indicate the amount of cooking that they have. I can see this one with the peas underneath is the first one. And another garnish that we do here would be, let's say, if you have a little bit of ham, then you put some. And what you do, actually, you put it all around the yolk, you know, other garnish. This is an ideal thing to use a little bit of sauce left over. One of the greatest eggs like that is with a truffle sauce, which is that very expensive mushroom, or a regular mushroom sauce, you know, and if you have it, uh, you just need maybe one, one and a half teaspoon per person of those eggs, of the sauce left over, you know. So let's see this one. May still be a little bit soft to be unmolded, really. I'll uh, take the chance, unmold it, here I have a napkin folded this way, which is a classical presentation to put those eggs in that I have here. And you eat that with your little uh, mouillette on the side here. And this one here can be unmolded directly on the toast. As I say, it needs a little more cooking. But I see it coming out. That's it. Nice and soft, you see. We put that right in the middle here. You would want to put that on a plate. And this is our egg breakfast. And now let's have our breakfast in the dining room. This is not your everyday breakfast, of course. This is a leisurely type of Sunday breakfast brunch even. Actually, when you have that type of breakfast, most of the time you don't have lunch either. Uh, we have a lot of savory dishes here. I think we probably eat too much sugar usually, especially for breakfast. So this is uh, your savory, especially if you do a little bit of jogging or exercise on Sunday morning, you know. This is a great breakfast to have. And uh, of course, like my, uh, my soup now, tend to be a little uh, thick, so I may want to put a little bit of milk in it. Uh, those things uh, tend to thicken, but it's kind of good and healthy. I mean, with the soup after, remember we have our mushroom omelette here, which is nice and smooth. I mean, you can cook it a bit less, a bit more. This is our cocotte eggs plan with the little mouillette. And here we have the three variations with the peas in the bottom, unmolded with the herbs around, with a bit of ham on top. And finally, after that, the little mold of white fish. Remember, you can use white fish or another type of smoked fish, and our beautiful uh, citrus fruit dessert. And with that, a nice mug of strong coffee, and if you're really festive, maybe a champagne cocktail, either your champagne plan, or maybe I like it with a little bit of orange juice in it. And with that, I want to toast you and wish you a happy cooking. <laughs>